As I've said before, public houses are a priceless source of intelligence. But I think Hebden Bridge is as significant as Todmorden, having driven round the whole area. And it's quite an interesting place, Hebden Bridge. Hebden Bridge has more lesbians per thousand members of the population than anywhere else in the UK. Why is that? Hmm. Right, it's my third day here, but I've walked along this path um, to get to the Gorpal Reservoirs. So I want to put the camera on the second reservoir, the one furthest west, because that's the most remote. So heading to the next one. Okay, that's the camera in position. I'm back in the car now. Um, so I'm going to leave that camera there probably at least a week, maybe a fortnight. I think I need a mountain bike. A chap just came flying past me there on, the, on, a, on a bike and um, yeah, it would take 10 minutes to get up there on a mountain bike, but it's taken me sort of, well, best part of two hours to get up there and back walking. And I wasn't really equipped wearing a bloody suit. You know, it was started raining and lost me hat. Okay, three weeks have gone by now and it's the 14th of July. Um, I've returned to the West Yorkshire Lancashire border and I'm going to go and retrieve the camera that I put there uh, three weeks ago and hopefully we'll see if it's got any images on it. Now I've also got two further stealth cameras which I'm going to mount possibly on another re reservoir which is very secluded um, on the other side of this valley. So I've got about a two mile walk to go and get this other camera and I can't wait to see uh, A if it's still there, uh, B has it been tampered with and C has it got any images on it. There's the lower reservoir that I've just walked past. Just pan back and then swivel around. This is the upper Gorpal Reservoir. And my camera is over here somewhere. It took me about five minutes to find it, but it's still there. Here it is. Let's see if the battery's still working. According to the display, it's taken, I don't know if you can see that, 244 images, so let's have a look at them. So that's actually, it's took a picture of me returning back, that's me walking past the camera trying to find it. I think we'll move on to a different reservoir now. That's three weeks and all we've got is a load of sheep and rabbits. Right, this is the other reservoir that I'm going to surveil. I think this is called Walsall Dean Reservoir and it's split into three separate reservoirs and that's the first one there, the, water, the, the, the dam of the first one you can see. And the first reservoir looks as though it's empty. It's going across there. And that, the path along the dam there, that's the Pennine Way, it goes along the edge there and then it goes further up the other side. That hiker there is on the Pennine Way, so the Pennine Way goes along the other side of the reservoir. Uh, as I say, across the dam. But I'm going to stay on this side and um, see if I can get sight of the water in the second reservoir. This is the second one. And I think there's another one just a bit further up, so I'm going to try and go up to walk to the last one. Seems like I've walked for ages. Eventually, I can see the third reservoir of the dam part of it. Pretty secluded in here now. 
So let's see if we can get a camera on the reservoir that's behind that wall there then. Just for the record, I'm bloody knackered. Oh, this one is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, look at it. Absolutely beautiful. Let me just show you this reservoir. Oh, I could have a swim in there. This is the last one in the chain of three. Could this be where the black triangles go in this reservoir? It is one of the most secluded. Probably more so than the last one I was at. So if I walk along these bricks here, walk along these rocks, and get to the centre, and I'll just attach one of the cameras to a rock. Right, I've got the camera set up, and I'll just show you how I've positioned it. There's the reservoir. And I'll just come near the water a little bit, and the camera is just hidden in the grass there. So the view that the camera's got I'll just, so that's the camera's view. The reservoir does continue, or the valley continues up a little gorge up there. That might be another place of interest around that corner. Right, let's get back to the car. We've got about three and a half miles to walk. Great. And I'm going to attach it to this wall. So where there's a gap in this wall here, the gap in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> marks the spot. Right, I've just set this one up. And it's on top of this wall. Got a nice vantage point across this valley. And it's looking out over that valley, which is the valley of the three reservoirs. You just see the pub in the distance there. So over to the left is Hebden Bridge, and over to the right here is Tobedon. So over the side of that hill, brow of that hill is where craft have been witnessed traversing so we've just got this camera which is going to take a photograph every 30 seconds between the hours of 9 p.m. and 9 a.m. Can you spot the hidden camera? It's pretty well hidden. Where is it? There it is. Right it's five to one now I've been here since about 7.30 and I've walked, I've just looked at the map and I've worked out that I've walked about nine miles this morning uh, to put these cameras out so I'm a bit knackered and I've just pulled up at the Pack Horse Inn pub which is the pub that I've been filming as I've been walking around these valleys. I'm going to go in for a well deserved pint of real ale and I'm going to ask the barman if any of these punters ever speak about UFOs. Okay I asked the barman and straight away he said no but Sometimes you get the impression of certain people that they've answered the question before they've even given it any thought and that was the sort of feeling I got that he had no interest in it. Although he did mention that bloke that got abducted, didn't he, in Todmorden. Um So he knew about that, but that was all. He hadn't, hadn't heard any other sightings. And I said to him, well, there was been stories in the, in the local media about um, people seeing things over Hebden Bridge. And he said... Oh, well, they're all stoned up there, aren't they? Now, I'm going to go to a place called Cornhome, where there's been at least four sightings um, over the last couple of years, just traversing over the top of the valley. And Cornhome is before you get to top of it along this road, so I want to try and find somewhere with a good vantage point overlooking Cornhome across the valley to put the camera in. Just look at that landscape. Okay, I'm just having a look at the map and I've um, got Tobberton here and I've drawn on the map some recent sightings and th uh, this also shows the direction of what, of what people have seen UFOs move in this direction, this direction, also this direction, there's another one here that direction. So I've actually just driven past um, Stones Lane, this is Stones Lane, I drove along this road from Tobberton so I'm actually parked up about here, okay? So I think it would be a very good place to put a camera here looking out over the valley. Because the valley straight ahead of me there that I'm just pointing out on the map, that's over the top, over the brow of that hill 
is where I've positioned the other cameras um, just beyond these reservoirs here on one of those fence posts there looking out over this valley would be a great place to put one of the cameras so I'm gonna just see if I can do that let's get out of the car okay now this one's in a much more conspicuous place than the others as you can see they might see it but that's a risk I guess it's in a really good position this is Todmorden down there straight across the valley and there's been multiple sightings over the last couple of years of lights traversing this this part of the valley. Got here a bit later than I thought but still thought I'd risk it. Maybe we might see something with it being dusk. Anyway I've got about two miles to walk before I pick up the, the two remote cameras and then I'm going to go and get the other one. The camera that I, I left there two and a half weeks ago and it should be uh, somewhere on the top of that wall, but I hope it's going to be there. Yes, it's still there. I can see you, little beauty. Off the beaten track in the middle of nowhere. Right, whether the batteries will, will, uh, whether the batteries will still get going. Right, I've got it, but I'm going to get straight back onto them, onto the main path because otherwise, I'm going to set my neck. One down, two to go. Um, I've got about another mile to this reservoir, and it's getting very dark now, so I'm going to I'm going to run. Right, I've just run about a mile to this reservoir. I have to be really careful here. Cold water kills, bathing prohibited. Whoops, you bugger! Right, it's um. After 10 p.m. now, as I said, it's the 1st of August, 50 yards along this shore. Okay, let's walk along. You little beauty. Still there. Yes, we have two cameras. Okay, now I've just got to negotiate the way back. Right, I'm walking back now. Pretty much getting pitch black now, so I'm going to start. Uh, running along this track the last probably about a mile. It's like that film. What is it? American Werewolf in London. <laughs> God, this is not a full moon. So there are aircraft kind of fly over this region on the Manchester airport route. <coughs> right, there's something coming overhead there now. Uh, yeah, I can hear the engine noise. So yeah, it's a plane going to Manchester Airport probably. Pretty much above the top of it, and I think there's another one over there. Right, I'm back in the car now, or the van as I now have. There is another camera to get, but that one's by main road, so I can drive to that one. What time is it now? It's 20 to 11. Right, I'm at the spot with the third camera, and this is the one that I most likely think is might not be there because it wasn't in a particularly hidden location but I think I could see the strap Let's have a look yeah there's the strap oh it's still there you beauty overlooking the whole valley you probably can't see that with this with this light okay so I've got all three cameras back nice and safe and I'm gonna have some fun looking at those SD cards Now one interesting facility between Todmorden and Bakeup is an amateur observatory on the side of a hill. Last year in October 2012 I went to investigate the site and although the observatory was closed I was invited in for a look around by the astronomer. What I found very bizarre was the main observing dome which is 25 feet in diameter did not have its telescope in commission. It was lying in the corner of the dome out of the way seemingly totally out of use. Instead, the dome was operating a magnifying mirror, which was able to observe all of the local surrounding countryside, which was being reflected onto a six-foot diameter screen, forming a large round table in the centre of the dome. 
the moving live images being reflected onto the table were also being video recorded. I wondered just exactly what it was they were looking for. Certainly not stars and planets with this configuration. If you could draw a line from Hebden Bridge through Todmorden to Bacup and then a little bit further to where we've been to the those three reservoirs at Haslingdon. That's where many of the recent sightings have been of these black triangles, silent, and this area of the Pennines was known as UFO Alley. We're just climbing out of Bacup and towards Topperden. If there's triangular craft darting about these hills, they would not be seen by the radar at Manchester Airport because of the terrain. So is that why they choose these kind of places? And just noted, we're on the road um, from Bacup to Topperden and there's a couple of telescopes. Or what look like um, the domes of telescopes on the side of these hills. Very interesting. There we go. What's that looking out for? I didn't know they were there. There we go. Tobinan's here and we're driving along this road here and something I was not aware of was the uh, telescopes that I saw um, and we've just found it on the um, Orden survey map. Where is it? The Astronomy Centre. This little map here of Hebden Bridge, uh, Todmorden and Bacup is a map that I drew of some of the UFO activity of flying triangles. You can see the arrows here represent the, um, where triangles have been spotted. Now, look at this line here. I did not know that there was an astronomy centre anywhere in this region. We've just driven past these telescopes and I've, I've drawn it, a letter A on the map there. That's where the astronomy centre is and it goes right through or the, the path of this UFO that I've drawn, which was witnessed in January 2012, flying over Bacup, uh, towards Bacup from Tobberden, was right through that point. We've got flying triangles at um, Waterfoot in April 2010. And we've got an astronomy center right in the middle of our UFO activity. We're heading, we've turned round and we're now heading back uh, towards this astronomy centre. There we go. Right, I've just walked up this steep embankment to have a look at the astronomy centre and there's there's a, just, there's a sign here a website address, telephone number. So where, where I was filming before was where that uh, yellow sign is and I was just stood at the top of that embankment so we've got quite a large uh, dish there or, sorry, quite a large dome there. And if I pan right round, there's another dome perched right on the brow of that smaller hill. Yeah. If we have uh, just small groups, which tends to be on Saturday nights, they come yeah. in dribs and drabs. Okay. We, we, we've got another... Do you want yeah. no sound for this? No, no, it's all right, you just keep talking, yeah. So we're inside the dome here of the... Of the is this the largest uh, dish? The largest uh, dome in, on the site? Yeah, yeah. So how big is this one? About, what, 30 feet or it's, something? It's uh, 20, 29 feet. 29 feet, yeah. okay. Fascinating. Mm. And we that's got, the sort of the slot there where it looks, yeah. looks out and the whole dome mm. rotates. Fantastic. We, we've got the same telescope as this in a smaller observatory. Right. So when we've got small groups, you know, we can just whiz, whiz it around anything you want to see. It's also computer controlled, so you can key in anything you want to see. It will automatically go to it, which saves a lot of Right. It, about and that's a reflector? Yeah, yeah, what? the Schmidt, Schmidt Cassegrains. Yeah. And what size reflector is it? 16 inch. 16 inch reflector. Yeah. Is that the biggest telescope that you've got here then? Is no, it? that's the biggest one. All right. That's a, that's a 30 inch. All right, so the mirror's not mounted on it though, is it not? Yeah. So where's the mirror? It's, sorry? Where's the mirror? The, the, well, the, the mirror will be in the bottom in that, in that sort of box. All right, box so you, part there, but it's out of it at the moment. But all right. It's, it's somewhat mothballed because right. you, you have to push it around, you know, yeah. and the motor drives on it. So and it's a 30-inch reflector, yeah? Yeah, right, yeah, 30-inch okay. reflector, yeah. Very good, very good.
But you're just using the 16 inch reflector at the moment, yeah? Using the 16 inch, yeah. Right. I mean, okay. it's plenty big enough for what we need to show the general public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, okay. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So this is known as a what? A, something obscura? Camera obscura. This Camera is, obscura. Yeah. So this is a, a, it's basically a plate which is about five feet in diameter. Yeah, and you've got a mirror up there. Yeah, this, this is, this is uh, just over six foot. Uh, right, six just foot over six foot. And it's showing you... It's got, a, it's got an angle of about um, 22 degrees. Right. So it's like looking for a pair of binoculars with twice, twice the field of view. Right. Which is getting a bit brighter now. Is it, if, the sun, if the sun came out, that would, you know, all, all the colours would really stand out. So normally astronomy, you're focused right in on something really small like Mars or something, but this has got an extremely wide field of view. It is, yeah. Very so, so why would you need really wide field of view in an observatory if you're That's looking right, at stars? Yeah. Yeah. So why would you need that, such the a wide field? The advantage is that the view you get on the table is the view you'd get if you were standing on top of the dome. Okay, So you have quite an advantage from that. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Well, they're only as good as what you can see, obviously. But I, I, I used to make these commercially, mm -hmm. and I've got them all over the, all over the world. Uh, right. If you've got somewhere where there's a wonderful view, you know, you can bring it in. Right, I've mean, fantastic. I've for, uh, for private people who used to have a wonderful view, and then they built all round. But if you put one of these on the roof, you know, it brings in the view they used to enjoy. And yeah. better because you're higher up to see it. Right. <laughs> Just an aluminium, aluminium uh, disc, thin disc with painted white. You've got to have something for the image to, to fall onto, you see, but the reflectivity of this is only a few percent compared to mm -hmm. the mirror. But you can't form an image on a mirror, you yeah. need to put one away from it. So, so, so can you, you have to have something that, that it, will, it will show up. So, on. can you record this image? Sorry? Can you record it? You can, yeah. Right, okay. So, when there's people not here, do they record it and look at it? or? People, people photograph it. Right, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, it, it is a lot brighter than this um, right. when the sun's out. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. You could even see individual sheep on the surrounding hillsides, all very Bob Lazar. This facility reminded me of the observing pool featured in the Fortress of Ultimate Darkness in the film Time Bandits. Sir, look! If I were creating a world, I wouldn't mess about with butterflies and daffodils. I would have started with lasers. Eight o'clock, day one. Oh! Sorry. I, I just can't wait for the new te technological dawn. Look! What is it, Vince? The map, sir. The map. They brought it with them. What? I saw the map, Master, just now. Are you sure? I'm sure, Master. Down there! The little one has it! The little one? This is our chance. This is what we've been waiting for! It, it will set us free. Shut up! If you're wrong, Benson, my revenge will be slow and unpleasant. I will turn you inside out over a very long period of time. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you! Now we must bait the hook. See if they bite and pull them in. Stand by for mind control. If you have any thoughts on how I can improve the surveillance project or want to suggest areas you think may be active, please get in touch via the website. That's all for this week, and remember believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I'm Richard D. Hall. Good night.